Okay. Um, now let's talk about the specific uh, provision, other provisions of the Code of Commerce that are still in force. Well, we discussed this already, bareboat versus contract of appraisement. But take note of um, the requirements, the, the important requirement, the requisites. It must be in writing, it must be drawn in uh, duplicate. Okay. It must be signed by the parties and it must comply with the formalities under Article 6.5.2. Okay. I don't expect you to enumerate all the uh, provisions. As I, I said last time, it, it's ideal to memorize, but if not, then you have to go over the list and look for some interesting provisions. Um, although it is required under the Code of Commerce that the formalities under Article 652 should be complied with, um, not all of them are really essential. For instance, um, there are provisions there which may be absent. And if absent, the charter party would still be binding. For instance, the, the charter party may provide for a primage. Primage. It's a compensation to the captain for the use of his property. This is a, a relic of the uh, old, um, I mean, uh, um, of the Spanish era. Uh, I, I think it was um, enacted when there were sales. Parang galleons pa yata. That's why one example is if the rope of the captain was used, or will be used, there can be a provision on primage, which is compensation to the captain for the use of the rope. So, uh, this is one of the provisions in a charter party. It pays to remember the concept, but take note that even if you remove this provision, if it's not one of those provided for in the charter party, it's still valid. Okay, but just like any other contract, you have to have the essential requisites of a valid contract under the new civil code. There must be consent of the parties. There must be consideration. That's why you have the pretage. Oh, siguro ito yung medyo ano nyo, kung medyo ipit na ipit na kayo, wala na kayong enumerate, isipin nyo yung mga requisites of a valid contract. Oh, consent. Parties. Sino ba yung mga parties? Magkano yung babayad? Ano yung gagawin? Ano yung object? Ano ba yung vessel na gagamitin? So, marami namang paraan yan eh. Discard, discard lang yan. Okay, so, um, well, there should be a provision also where the um, the vessel will be placed at the at the disposal of the control of the charterer. Okay? Now, there might be instances when the agreement is really charter party, but still, a bill of lading will be issued. Okay. So, it's, for instance, a time charter, a voyage charter. But in addition to the charter, meron pang bill of lading. If it is really a charter party, such as a voyage charter or a time charter, the, the only, according to the Supreme Court, the only, well, the use of the bill of lading is proof of receipt of the goods. It is not proof of the contract because it is the charter party that is proof of the contract. Okay, so remember your... Um, characteristics of the of bills of lading that we discussed last time. It is a receipt. It is a contract. It may be a negotiable document of title. But if it is issued to a company, a charter party, in a real charter party, the bill of lading is not proof of the contract. It's just proof of receipt of the goods. Okay. 
um, one of the provisions in a char charter party, a boy charter, a time charter, ladies, or the murage, the murals, the murage, I'm not so sure about the um, how to pronounce this, but let's just assume that I am correct anyway. Um, the murage, the murage, ladies. So it, it simply means that, of course, um, if there is a charter party, parang lease lang yan, it's a lease, some sort of a lease. There is a period, hindi naman forever yan. If it's a time charter, it's a, for a fixed period. If it's a voyage, although a, a certain period is not fixed, you know uh, the point of departure and destination. Okay. In order to avoid the problem of the charterer taking his own sweet time in removing the cargoes from the vessel at the point of destination, they will agree for a period, I mean, they will fix a period within which the charterer will remove his goods. This period is late day. Okay. Libre, I mean, not libre, but it's covered by the original consideration. So what you paid for, that includes the lay day. If you will not remove within this period, magbabayad ka ng demurrage. It's just the compensation for the time in excess of lay day. So that's demurrage. Oh, well, this was involved in one or two cases, so if the examiner will ask questions based on cases, then it's also a possibility. So that is a provision. Uh, but um, there's also a rule in maritime law that a demurrage is always a demurrage. Um, this, oh, well... Let's start by restating one of the rules that is also accepted. Although there is a period, there's a lay day provided for, and in excess of that period or beyond that period, the charterer will be liable to the murage. There are instances like fortuitous event. He was prevented from removing the vessel because of a storm or a typhoon. That might ex excuse him and uh, from his liability for the murage. Okay. But there is a view, a majority view, that if this so, I mean, exempting circumstance, what should have been an exempting circumstance, occurred after the lay day, then you should still pay the murage. Okay. So in other words, if you have three days to unload, storm occurred before the expiration, then you can invoke the defense. On the second day, there's storm, so you are not able to remove all the, the goods. You can invoke for two with this event. But if the storm occurred after you are already liable for the murage, then you have to pay. Perhaps you can justify this, it under other provisions by talking about delay, even under the new civil code. Uh, you will still be liable even if there is a fortuitous event in case of delay. So you can apply that rule in the case of a demurrage. And that's why a demurrage, according to this rule, is always a demurrage. Once it is due, it's always due, even if there is... It's a, it will, the liability will not be erased by the happening of a so-called fortuitous event. Okay? So those are interesting provisions regarding charter party. Uh, let me see. Sublease. Well, in a contract of um, lease under the new civil code, you can sublease unless there is a 
prohibition. Okay. In a charter party, there can also be a prohibition on sublease. If you charter a vessel, you cannot. It can be agreed that you cannot sublease it to somebody else. But the question is, what if instead of subleasing, you took in cargos from third persons, meaning you you undertook to transport goods for compensation as a carrier, even if you do not own the the vessel, even if it it belongs to somebody else. Is this a violation of the provision? The Supreme Court in one case said that this is not a violation of a provision on sublease. Okay. Dead freight. It's just a liability. For instance, if you um, if you engage, if you entered into a charter party for a specific space. Uh, let's, I don't know how you, you, you call this um, space in a vessel, but let's talk about square meters. Let's say you, your agreement is to load and charter and load goods in the space like 100 square meters, even if you do not utilize no, that's dead, dead freight. You don't utilize that portion. You may be made to pay. Okay. This is also a Supreme Court. Well, it was involved in a Supreme Court decision. That's why it's also... Um, it may attract examiners. Okay. 